past, you know? It's a new day, bro. My day. Wrestling fans, I am so happy to be pleased by a longtime friend of mine, the longest reigning WWE champion in SmackDown history. He was the greatest color commentator this side of Bobby the Brain Heenan. The one, the only John Layfield coming to us, unfortunately not from Bermuda, but from New York tonight. John, thank you for being with us. beautiful so I, I hate to leave and come to the northeast when the weather's so nice in bermuda unbelievable john you have taken over the world of social media which some in the world of professional wrestling and sports entertainment have yet to do but very entertaining posts facebook twitter you're all over the place but one of the great causes that you have created yourself is reminiscent almost of what mick foley has done of late which i consider to be a great thing in showing that the world of wrestling can do a great things when it's in the hands of the right people. Tell us a little bit about what you have been up to down in the great island of Bermuda. Well, I set up a program uh, almost a year ago uh, with kids uh, basically at risk in Bermuda. Bermuda has a lot of money that's offshore money. It's, you know, it's where a lot of the big tech companies put their money. It's the reinsurance capital world. But you also have a huge, huge uh, wealth divide between the uber wealthy and the poor and you have a lot of at-risk kids in bermuda about 50 percent of black bermudian males don't graduate in bermuda and that puts them pretty much uh, at risk immediately uh, it's a lot of people going into society that really don't have many choices and our main thing we're doing is trying to keep kids in school now we're trying to instill values and you know keep them out of trouble and all the things associated with the the bad things in society but the main thing we're trying to do is keep these kids in school. And, and so far, we're having a, quite a bit of success. Hopefully, it continues. What exactly are you doing right now? I've read, and I don't want to be incorrect, but you've actually been involved in coaching some of these rugby teams? Yeah, I sure have. We, we set this up. One thing we found, that working with kids that are disenfranchised, a sport like rugby is perfect. Uh, American football would be perfect, but the problem with that is you need 11 a side, uh, you need a lot of equipment that goes with American football. With rugby, you can play five a side, you can play seven a side, you can play up to 15 a side. You only need a ball, a ball and a field. And that's really all you need to play rugby. It allows kids to go out there and get the aggression out of them that they want to, but in a way that is controlled. And we have an island there that really doesn't have any uh, aggressive sports. You know, soccer and cricket, much like uh, most of Europe, that's their main sports, but it doesn't allow them to get out that aggression. And one thing we found is allowing them to get out that aggression has really helped uh, their behavior uh, and helped them in, in their school, helped them in their family levels. We have a complete holistic program. So we help them with tutors. We help them with a homework academy for our middle school kids. Uh, we help them with uh, career guidance. Uh, we give them a meal every night to get them home safe. Uh, we, we take care of them for, really from about 3 to about 7.30 at night. And we got some pretty good rugby players out, out of the mix. We, uh, we played uh, one of the rival high schools, Barkley, with a bunch of kids that had never played rugby before. And they had eight of their ten kids had played on the national team. And this was our first full game. And we ended up beating those guys. Uh, we've got a lot of real talent. Uh, I know nothing about rugby. I played American <laughs> football. We've got a great coach. I'm learning it. I literally picked up the Idiot's Guide to Rugby, which is pretty fitting for me. I've watched a ton of DVDs on Ulster and Munster out of uh, Ireland because our coach is from Ireland. I'm learning a lot about the game. I love the game. I think it's a lot of fun, especially 15s. I'm, not as much a fan of sevens, but the 15s to me is, is a lot of fun to watch and a lot of fun for the kids to play. Now, where it's down in Bermuda, is it a, a small group of folks that are trying to help this organization get off its feet, or is it growing by the day? Or We've got underneath uh, me directly 61 kids, uh, okay. 30 at our middle school, about 31 at our middle school, about 30 at our high school. We have a league that we set up, the first island-wide league. There's seven middle schools in Bermuda. Bermuda only has about 65,000 people. It's 22 miles wide by one mile long, so it's only 22 square miles. It's an hour and a half off the coast of North Carolina, about an hour and a half from, from New York City, JFK. And uh, we've got 
some wonderful people helping us. The Family Center there is one of the best organizations I've ever been around. The rugby union there has, they, they've had rugby there for decades. And so we basically had a marriage of the two. And we used Beyond Sport out of uh, UK. Uh, a guy named Nick Keller started this. Tony Blair is one of the principals in it. Desmond Tutu, the New York Yankees back it. All five major league sports leagues in the United States back it. The Premier League backs it. Manchester U, Chelsea, uh, you pretty much name it in professional sports. They back Beyond Sport. And they helped us set up our program uh, of Beyond Rugby there in Bermuda. We use some great examples of gangs uh, programs that had done, been done in Rio de Janeiro. Right here in New York City, Mark Griffiths, Play Rugby USA, and Rob Castanato and Beyond the Ball in Chicago all came in to help us set up the curriculum for this program. So we've got some wonderful help there uh, in Bermuda. Uh, got some wonderful partners all trying to do the same thing. In our league, uh, like I said, we had seven middle schools on the island. Six of the seven are playing in our league. We found giving these kids a carrot to play toward was a great reward for them and really helped uh, everything associated with the program, giving them that carrot. We have four or four high schools playing the league. So we have about 250 to 400 kids, depending on the week, playing rugby. And out of that, about 250 have never played before. So our reach is greater than our program of 61 kids. And we're using that as a way to expand our program. But this is our first year. We want to get it set with our kids first and then expand uh, island-wide over the next, say, five to six years. This is why I love to do interviews. I always learn something. This isn't uh, all-inclusive of rugby. This is a, a program that is far-reaching that goes beyond the sport itself for these kids? Absolutely. Uh, we run a kids program. We don't run a sports program is what I tell everybody. is the best way to explain it. We have some fantastic rugby being played for kids who have just played it a short amount of time. we got great athletes. But this is a kids' program. This is all about a kids' program. We uh, call every one of the parents every single week, ask them to come down and support their kids. Uh, we work with these kids every single day, and we're trying to first get them to graduate, and second, instill some values in them to help them achieve what they want in life and also help them understand what their options are because a lot of them don't understand what their options are because they've been kind of left out of society. So it's much bigger than just a rugby program, which is why we call it Beyond Rugby. And the foundation website, it's beyondrugbybermuda.org? It's beyondrugbybermuda.com is our website, and I've got an initiative, uh, sevensummitsforkids.com. Uh, which all the money goes to kids' programs that, that we're working with and the therapeutics uh, behind the case management and anything that's needed with those kids. Uh, but those are our two websites. We're on Facebook, uh, Beyond Rugby Bermuda, and directly at the URL, beyondrugbybermuda.com. Unbelievable. I did some homework prior to this interview just to try and get a feel of what was going on down there, and it really was incredible. Um, where we have our Soul Survivor 8 uh, fundraiser, live event, fan fest meet and greet whatever the heck you want to call it saturday march the 24th and it's so inclusive to so many nonprofits and charities in this area and where you have been such a great friend to us here in the mwf and beyond over the years especially helping with my back with those tremendous layfield energy drinks um we are going to auction off not one not two but three autographed wwe diva photos um Divas are about the only area we haven't dived into in this event when it comes to uh, items you can win and so on and so forth. But thanks to some friends in WWE and beyond, we will be having an autographed uh, WWE, what they call a photo file, glossy photo of Molina. One that is signed by both of the Bella Twins and one signed by the lovely Kelly Kelly. We're going to auction them off during intermission. 100% of the proceeds are going to go to John's initiative beyond rugby Bermuda and I think that's a great thing oh that's awesome uh, you know it's so appreciated uh, 100% of the money goes to kids you know I, I put my money toward this program uh, one thing we're doing the seven summits for kids.com 100% of money goes to that any money donated to beyond rugby all goes to the kids 
I'm a, not only a 100% volunteer, I help fund the program uh, as needed. We have some wonderful partners down there, Aspen and, and Valdis Re uh, and Deloitte have all been uh, great uh, corporate sponsors for us. But everything we can do like this goes directly to kids, and it just means so much to them. Uh, it really, we, we stretch a dollar, we stretch a dime into a dollar down there, and so money we get, uh, we put to good use. Well, the fans up this way know we were named Special Olympic Partners in both 2011 and 2012, and we look to try and do good wherever we can because, unfortunately, there's a lot of folks that don't look at the great sport of professional wrestling in the highest of esteems. And as I've said to Mick Foley recently and others, that when put in the right hands, professional wrestling and people involved in it can do an awful lot of good. Yeah, I think it can, and Mick does a wonderful job. I'm a huge fan of Mick. He actually reached out to me yesterday. I was uh, on the rugby pitch yesterday working with some kids, and he asked me to retreat something he is doing for WrestleMania Raffle, which is a great thing. And I got back to him right away and told him I would as soon as I got in, and I did. He sent me a very nice note. But Mick does a wonderful thing uh, with charity, and he's done it for years and years and years. I spoke with ESPN uh, for their magazine and I don't remember, I'm bad with time, but maybe a year ago, whenever it was, 10th anniversary of our show for uh, 9-11, so 9-13-2011, uh, uh, I guess it was. Okay. They, and they were wanting to talk about different things that had been done. And I'm a big fan of ESPN, and they, they were wonderful in the interview. But they were amazed at how much stuff the WWE had done with the troops, with with the soldiers going to Iraq, going to Afghanistan, all the charity events. Uh, We were the first charity to go down to 9-11, two ground zero. Uh, Another sports team canceled that day because they had found anthrax uh, that had been delivered to Capitol Hill, and they were scared. Uh, We were the first one of the first groups to go into Iraq and Afghanistan, and so many people miss that. You know, you you get there's there's a lot of bad press about wrestling, and it just amazes me that no matter what you think uh, about pro wrestling, you got to admire what is being done by the WWE guys like Mick Foley for charity. It's just remarkable things that Vince McMahon and the WWE has done. Uh, they helped fund one of my events uh, personally uh, for kids. And it wasn't even asked. They just wrote me a check. Uh, it, 100% of the money went to kids. It's just something that doesn't is not in the media and is not there. He funded a, a golf tournament for Make-A-Wish for me one time and doubled all the money I raised. And, and the one thing he said was, don't let it be in the media. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it was... Uh, this is the first time I've actually said it uh, out loud that it, that it was there. You know, oh, good Lord, it was 15 years ago. But those are things that these guys do, and, and they don't get credit for it for some reason, which absolutely blows me away because when you tell people what all WWE has done, what people, what Mick Foley has done, what people like Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn specifically have done, people are just blown away by their generosity. Well, you know what? I almost wanted to step in for a moment, but you mentioned the 9-11 tragedy. How many, literally thousands of T-shirts did WWE send down there so those folks had something clean to wear? Yeah, they, they took uh, tons thousands. of... Uh, they fed them. They sent down tons of merchandise for them. Uh, it was a remarkable thing they did uh, for 9-11. And, and you had a couple of pro sports teams that filtered in later yeah. uh, that got a lot of press about it. But WWE never got the press for doing that. And that's yeah. not the reason they did it, they did it uh, obviously. It was, yep, exactly. The world, but it was really impressive what they did. Worldwide leader in Make-A-Wish Foundation grants the tribute to the troop show every year where the folks guarantee, uh, donate their time, I should say to put smiles on the American heroes' faces around the world. You never hear those kinds of bright stories. You hear one positive out of maybe 20 negative, which is absurd. That's right. Uh, Vince McMahon sent me a text when he got back uh, last year. You know, he went with the Bella Twins and a couple other guys uh, to uh, Afghanistan personally uh, last year. You know, here's the CEO of, uh, depending on the stock market valuation, a billion dollar company and he's off himself personally which has got to drive his board of directors nuts by the way (laughs) 
going to Afghanistan because he always says, I'll never have anybody do what I won't do myself. And he loves going over there and visiting troops. Unbelievable. What WWE does, unfortunately, you know, the public will never want to, well, the public will never get the real story out of the media because it's not as sexy as some of the, the tragic stories we hear about sometimes. But before we get back to Beyond Rugby Bermuda, I have to ask you a question, which must be a really exciting time for you. It's WrestleMania season. Your longtime partner, you want to talk about New York, Ron Simmons, getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. I remember you two teaming with The Rock to defeat Triple H, Road Dogg, and X-Pac back in April of 2000. How does it feel to see your longtime partner in crime getting his just rewards, first in the world of college football and now in WWE wrestling? I couldn't be happier for Ron. Uh, people had asked me, do, do I wish that my run had come earlier? Because by the time I, I got to be JBL, I was pretty much getting either past my prime or just, just right on the edge of past it. And I'd have been happy being part of the APA the rest of my career, and I really would have been. I enjoyed being around Ron that much. Uh, he was, I've never had a closer friend. Uh, you know, he said, when he was best man at my wedding, and he said at the end of his best man's toast, which he got a standing ovation for, which is unbelievable. He said, you know, with you and your wife, till death do you part. He said, but in our friendship, he said, till death do we part. And I just thought, that's about the coolest thing anybody could ever say uh, toward me. I, I've never had a better friend. I've never had a better mentor. And I am so happy for Ron. It is it is really well deserved uh, for Ron. And I don't think people understand you know, the, the amount of things he did in, in his career. You know, he was part of a great tag team with Butch Reed as Doom. First recognized black heavyweight champion, but a three-time All-American at Florida State. Bobby Bowden said that Ron Simmons was the most impactful football player he had ever coached. And he coached Deion Sanders and Charlie Ward. Uh, it's just, the guy was one of, if not the best college nose tackle to ever play the game. And I'm just thrilled to death for him. Uh, Barry Windham's going in also, which also is one of my tag that's partners. That's right, so it, New Blackjacks. I mentioned that in a video a little earlier. That's right. It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm very excited uh, about the Hall of Fame this year. I think it's truly one of the finest glasses they've ever had, but that's just my own personal opinion. Uh, another question I want to toss out there, just because I enjoy reading your tweets so much, any thoughts on what the final outcome is going to be in the uh, primary season? I think, uh, you know, everybody, <laughs> it's funny because Republicans hate Romney and the Democrats hate uh, Obama. So it's, uh, I, nobody wants to elect anybody that's running, but I, I think Romney probably ends up winning it. I know Santorum surprised down in Alabama and Mississippi, but Romney has so many more delegates uh, right now. And mathematically, it's almost impossible for Santorum uh, to catch Romney. I just don't think he will. So it's probably going to end up being Romney versus uh, President Obama. And I think it all boils down to the economy. If the economy's good, President Obama gets reelected. If the economy gets worse, uh, then, then Romney has a chance and, and will probably get elected. But I think it's all President Obama's to lose right now. Well, you heard it from John Layfield's mouth himself, folks. Again, Saturday, March the 24th, Soul Survivor Eight, right, right down the street from MWF Studios at Memorial Hall in Melrose. All-star lineup, MWF heavyweight champion, Low-Key, Fit Finley, Carlito, Paul Bear, unfortunately, will be with us, Al Snow, Bushwhacker Luke, John Cena Sr., the list goes on and on. We what have... a lineup. Well, come on up. Good we... grief. I'm waiting for the day when I get that email where you say yes. <laughs> I don't want Finley. I wrestled Finley about 20 years ago, and he knocked out my tooth, so I, I don't even want to show up in the same town as Finley right now. And you guys had that WrestleMania match in Orlando back in 08. That's right. We almost got the little uh, horn swaggle with the trash can. <laughs> oh, the memories we have. But, I mean, just between... Something we didn't even dive into is that in the, the afternoon of this event, we're having a private event that is closed to the public that is just for nonprofit organizations, you know, not to name them all, but like Special Olympics, Make-A-Wish, and so on and so forth. Again, professional wrestling on a much smaller scale than WWE, but just trying to give back and do something good to the local community. But where we really do good is through our raffles and auctions and so on and so forth. We've been able to raise last year over $14,000 in cash and in-kind gifts, which is pretty good for an independent group. 
Uh, it's going to be a great day, and like we said, we have. I went digging through the MWF archives this morning because my back exploded and it wouldn't stop spasming. We were able to come up with the autograph photo of Melina, the autograph photo of the Bella Twins, which is signed by both, and the autograph photo of Kelly Kelly, all official WWE photos, thanks to those great folks down at Stanford. And 100% of the proceeds from your bid will go to... I'm going to mess it up. No, I'm not. Beyond Rugby Bermuda. Did I get it, John? You got it right. It's Absolutely. Been a, it's been a long six months. <laughs> you need to uh, autograph Paul Bearer and give him away. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring Paul Bear down to get a tub of Popeye's fried chicken and have him sign that as a rare collectible. He'll be in, it better be a big tub. He'll be in for a dozen or two pieces. <laughs> you can ask Paul Bear about me and Barry Wendell hitting him and Kane going down the road and rent car. See, uh... He didn't like that very much. <laughs> well, he can be very moody, no pun intended. But nonetheless, John, one thing I wanted to touch base upon before we let you go, where I myself have a severe need right now for a spinal fusion in my back, obviously, um, you, you've you created this almost a competition within yourself where you're planning on these different climbing endeavors and you yourself suffered from a broken back is just as a human being that it feels your pain literally uh, what exactly are you doing and why <laughs> the why is probably the biggest question <laughs> i've always uh, since i was a kid i was sick a lot when i was a kid and i read just incessantly and i still read probably a book a week uh sometimes a little longer depends on how long the book is just i love reading it and i used to love reading about sir edmund hillary and george mallory climbing mount everest I'd always had a goal to climb Mount Everest, and as I got older, I still wanted to do it. Then I broke my back, I got a couple herniated discs, but it's gotten better over the years. I've I'm, I'm been able to keep my weight down fairly well, need to be a little lower, but I've kept, been able to keep my weight off, which has helped tremendously. And so I've got my first mountain June 17th. Uh, I'm going to climb, or at least attempt to climb, uh, the Seven Summits, which is the highest peak on every continent ending in Mount Everest, uh, and it's sevensummitsforkids.com is the website. 100% of money is going to go to the kids' programs. I'm paying for the trip, so 100% of money goes to kids' programs. Uh, but I'm starting with Mount Elbrus in the Russian Caucasus Mountains. It's the highest mountain in Europe, about 18,500 feet, I think it is. And that'll be my first mountain I climb. Then I'm going to go on to Aconcagua in South America, Vincent in Antarctica, uh, Cartens in Indonesia and end up with Everest uh, as my last mountain. Denali will, in uh, Alaska will be one of my last mountains, but Everest will be the last one I attempt. And just depends. I don't know if it'll be somewhere between two and four years from now, depending on how rapidly I make a progression. That's uh, under the assumption that I don't die on one of these mountains. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I die, uh, hopefully all the money is cleared for charity, and that way the, the kids still get the money. So <laughs> it'll be posthumous uh, donation. But I plan on climbing the Seven Summits. Uh, it's been a goal of mine since I was a kid to climb Everest. Now, as I got older, uh, Annabella Bond, look her up. She's a real uh, uh, beautiful lady uh, out of the U.K., uh, lives in the U.K. I don't, she's not from there. A uh, friend of uh, my wife and I, and she is the fastest woman to climb the seven summits. I'd met Annabella a few years ago, and it gave me the idea that I'd like to climb the seven summits because you've got to train on certain mounts to get to Everest anyway. And I thought, what better training than to try to climb the seven summits and then end up with Everest on, as my last mountain? Well, I will say this right here, right now. Again, we don't know how much good we can do, but we're going to track what's going on on the BostonWrestling.com super site and MWF-TV. And every time we have an MWF live event, we're going to try and auction a raffle off some kind of merchandise to donate towards this cause. You know, even if it's $10, if everybody out there tried to do something nice for the various charities out there in need, the world would be a better place, in my opinion. And I do that in the honor of my now X's two little guys. Uh, but this is certainly a great cause. The more I hear you speak about it, the more excited about it I get. We have the great prizes up for grabs March 24th, but it's something that I want to continue with. Whether the MWF winds up moving to North Carolina as a certain individual wants, it's here in Boston or someplace else, it's something we want to follow and you know certainly do what we can to help you with. Well, thank you. You know, there's a lot of great charities out there. And, you know, I'm not saying that uh, ours is any better than, than any others, but uh, we certainly uh, 
I, I know where every dollar goes, and every dollar we get goes straight to kids' programs. And I, and I think people should give. Uh, that's you know, America has been wonderfully blessed, and I think people should give as they can. And some can give a lot, and, and some some don't. And some are going to want to give to what I do, and some are going to want to give to uh, what other folks do as well. Which you know, to me, that's as long as you're giving, I think that's that's the key thing. I. Uh, I just hope that I'll live to see the, the seven summits and, uh, and live to get back down. They say that the summit is uh, optional. Getting back down is mandatory. So that's, that's my motto, at least, on these mountains. Well, if I had the pencil and was trying to come up with the finish, so to speak, as an inside joke, I would love to see the finale of you reaching the seventh summit be what you and Barry Wyndham saw coming back from a bar in Africa standing on the beach wearing next to nothing. Wouldn't that be a, a great ending to a reality TV show? <laughs> well, they should have. i tell you what. The, 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 <laughs> the things that me and Barry and then me and Ron saw traveling around the world together and literally around the world together, you could not even put in a reality show because nobody would believe it. It was that crazy. Unless you've, like I was saying this to Al Snow not too long ago when we had dinner together, unless you've been in this sport or around the sport, you would not believe these stories because they're not human. I tell people stories, and I, <laughs> I called myself the other day. I was telling some people some stories, and I, I'm looking at them, and I can tell they don't believe me. <laughs> and I'm telling a 100% true story. I just stopped. I thought there's no sense. That, that they, they just don't understand that when we were especially younger, it was the wild, wild west. It was an incredible time. You couldn't get away with that nowadays, but uh, back then you could, and it was certainly a lot of fun. I will never forget the reaction that you and Ron Simmons had when the Sheik gave his Hall of Fame speech at WrestleMania 21 when I unfortunately had to go out to Los Angeles with the Fool. Uh, it, <laughs> again, those are memories that will last a lifetime. But beyond talking about the Sheik again, it's beyondrugbybermuda.com. Go there now. Check out what John's doing. It is tremendous. You can make a financial a contribution if you're not going to be at Soul Survivor on March 24th. If you're going to be at our marquee event of the year, which is shaping up to be one of the biggest of all time with this North Carolina inside job, I mean, you can bid on one, you can bid on all three. Again, we have an autographed WWE promo photo of Molina, one signed by both of the Bella Twins, and one signed by Kelly Kelly. That is a WWE Diva fan's dream come true, John. Absolutely. Uh, you, you can't get any better than the uh, Divas of the WWE. I was, uh, I've been in Iraq a bunch of times, and I'm telling you, those soldiers could have Elvis Presley singing, and one of the Divas walk out, and Elvis gets ignored. So <laughs> <laughs> you've got the right charity auction for, for any male of any age. Well, it, like I said, if you go to the event page, we have just about every aspect of professional wrestling, current and past, covered with our giveaways. But we didn't have anything with the Divas, and I thought that would be pretty cool for what you have going on down in Bermuda. John, before we go, any final thoughts, any final plugs about Facebook, Twitter, your websites? We want to get it all out there for the folks to read about, <laughs> learn, and enjoy. Well, thank you. Uh, Twitter is at, at JC Layfield. I have a lot of fun on Twitter. I interact with fans all the time. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, my Facebook page is the public page, John Layfield, with my Briscoe Brothers T-shirt uh, representing. Uh, I have a lot of fun on that stuff. Social media to me is like being in the locker room. You know, I sit there and watch uh, football games or basketball games, and all my buddies are sitting there tweeting me. And it's just... It's just a blast. I, I never thought it'd be that much fun, the, the social media stuff. I, I really enjoy it. And, of course, my website, sevensummitsforkids.com, where you can read about my uh, probably foolish attempt to climb uh, the tallest mountains in the world. Beautiful. John, it was a pleasure joining you. I can't wait to see how things turn out on March 24th. And, again, this is something we really want to follow and hopefully contribute to as time goes on and your experience goes on with this great endeavor. Well, thank you, Dan. I look forward to it. I look forward to updating you, and hopefully I, I come back my, from my first mountain with all my fingers and toes, no, nothing, no frostbite, and I'm alive. The Sheik will be waiting for you at the airport. Wrestling fans, it's <laughs> The Sheiky <been> baby! <laughs> it's been a pleasure as always, John. Hopefully we'll talk to you soon, fans. We'll catch you next time. We got the fast, we'll